Hello everybody, this is TechCut. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at this little single board computer here. Came in this box right here. This is a direct competitor to the Raspberry Pi. Both of these are very similar devices with some key differences. For the most part, the IO is incredibly similar. This one, or the Raspberry Pi, has an extra USB. Uh, this orange Pi has an audio jack. The Raspberry Pi has two micro HDMI, while the Orange Pi has one uh, standard HDMI. And this uh, Orange Pi here actually includes a little Wi-Fi antenna, which is kind of cool. Uh, I'm not going to go into full detail, direct comparison of these two. The main focus of this is the Orange Pi. But the last thing I'll mention uh, when it comes to the comparison between the two is the Orange Pi has a slightly more powerful CPU. This one is the uh, Rockchip RK399. Both of them are running the uh, Cortex-A72 architecture, but the key difference is this one is slightly more powerful at 1.8 gigahertz, while the Raspberry Pi is at 1.5 gigahertz. And another thing that makes this uh, orange Pi pretty nice as compared to the other uh, piece of fruit we have there is the, uh, the option for the eMMC storage, which at least in my little testing I've done so far is considerably faster than the uh, read and write speeds that we get off of booting and running straight off of an SD card. Granted, this does have an SD card slot, so you could do either or. When it comes to memory, you have the options between three and four gigabytes. This is the four gigabyte model. Up on top, we have our 26 pin headers, and below that we have our little uh, eMMC storage. If you don't include that, that spot is blank. Beside our 26 headers, we have a 24 pin mini PCIe. And then moving on to the side, we have our single USB 2.0. We have gigabit ethernet, our little Wi-Fi antenna we can see connected there. And then we have a USB 3.0 above and a USB 2.0 below. Next to that, we have our DC power connector. This is a five volt or four amps. And then moving over, we have a USB type C, which can also double as a five volt power port. We have HDMI out, a full size HDMI out, which does differ from the Raspberry Pi here, which has two uh, mini or I think it's micro mini something two smaller uh, HDMI display outs. And then of course we have a audio output. And then over here on the other side, we have two ports for cameras or LCD two. And then looking at the chips again, the big silver one in the middle is our CPU. And to the left of those, we're gonna have our memory. Each one of these modules is either gonna be 1.5 or two gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory, depending on the specification that you chose. Flipping it over to the back here, we have our micro SD card slot for either booting operating systems off of or using it to actually install from the SD to our onboard storage. We have two buttons here, a recovery button and a reset button. And then on the other side, we have an additional LCD connector. So with that, let's go ahead and actually plug this guy in and uh, see what it ships with. But first, I must interject a bit to thank the sponsor of today's video, A Plus Electric and their cable management kits. They're on Amazon at a relatively affordable price, and they come in all different shapes and sizes. This is the one for a lot of cables. This is the one for not a lot of cables. On the back here, it's basically double-sided tape, so you just peel this off like so, whoop, stick it to your wall, and you're good to go. Actually covering up the cords is this very thin face cover right here, so you just lay the cords in and you could either slide or pop this on. The kits do come with mounting screws if you need them, and they also come with various joints and end caps and whatever you really need. I'm using these in my house and I have been thoroughly impressed, that's why I accepted the sponsor agreement. So if you're interested in trying these out, they're about 15 to 30 bucks depending on the size and quantity, there'll be a link down below. All right, so here we are on our main operating system. This is Orange Pi OS. So let's go ahead and go over here. First thing I'm going to notice, the uh, GPU acceleration, or even if it has that, is not very good. If I go ahead and scroll down this menu here, that is not a capture lag. That is simply lag lag. I'm using a capture card to record directly off of this, and this is a fresh boot. So if we open up our little terminal here, and jump to H top, we can see some of the system resource utilization on boot. 750 megabytes, and that holds true. That's what it's been in my little bit of testing using it here and there. And CPU generally at the moment is very low. And if this is bullseye here, let's go ahead and open up a NeoFetch to get a little bit more information on that. 
if I can type, there we go. So you can see here, Debian 11 Bullseye. This is 5.10 Orange Pi. And this is running Bash. We're in 1440p at the moment. The default desktop environment on this system is going to be XFCE 4.16. And everything else is basically just standard XFCE. If we go over here and check out some of the pre-installed applications under accessories, we have Midnight Commander, Plank, again, basic XFCE stuff. I installed GIMP. It did not include that. Uh, under internet chromium browser is the default multimedia mp mpv which is a very good option uh, and that's really it just basic settings just basic tools that you need to get started it does come with the uh, gnome software center which i believe is an interesting decision but a appreciated one there we go took it a little bit for the initial load but even for an xfc system I mean, it looks pretty good uh, let's close that out for now and i'm going to just kind of demonstrate some of the performance here if we go to htop and a good example of kind of how this is going to run in general is with a gimp so let's go into graphics gnu image manipulation program there we go so here let's go ahead and just create a new new and new canvas here and any lag you see on the screen is very accurate it's not snappy but it runs good enough to the point where i mean it works so let's drag this back over here so we can kind of see what that's doing and generally a good kind of benchmark to run is of course a lava render so just go lever, uh, render lava and then here we can hit okay and generally on a really good system this will take like five seconds on my old thinkpad 450 this takes around 10 seconds and I believe this is kind of on par with that, taking just about just over 10 seconds or so. Depending. I'm not going to do any cuts there. There we go. And we can see the CPU's not maxed out, but it's definitely being used. If we kind of go in and out and do some things, you can see how the resources are being utilized. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. The true test is web browsing. So if we go web browser, it's going to open up Chromium which again is the default. And here you can tell I've actually been using a little bit. This uh, did surprise me because it can run a 1080p video with a little bit of stutter here and there, but nothing too dramatic. So if we open up one of my later videos here, you can kind of see how hard it's having to work to do this. The CPU definitely is up there, about 50% utilization or so. So let's skip that ad and actually get into it. This currently is uh, 1080p. So this is how it is rendering this uh, 1080p footage let's make that a little bit bigger it's using 43 to 50 percent so it's definitely a usable experience and you can see within the actual uh, footage here and all that there's very limited to basically no lag and i'm actually going to keep this video just running in the background and kind of get ready to do the next little thing we're going to do because the system isn't too special it's your basic debian system uh, for general computing purposes, I mean, this thing probably is going to run perfectly fine, unless if you're trying to start, like, doing CPU-intensive processes, such as rendering and all that, but for just basic, uh, some minor GIMP work, some, uh, having tabs open, watching videos, it's going to perform okay, and, I mean, I have it right here, it's not too hot, so that's good. One thing I do recommend with any of these is a little fan, just like this guy, this is the, uh, case for the uh, Raspberry Pi I have here. And I've actually ran benchmarks that showed that using even a little teeny tiny baby fan, I mean, just look how cute that little thing is. Using a little fan like that can uh, dramatically improve your uh, CPU performance and your just whole computing performance altogether. So this is their main website. And you see there, they actually have an Orange Pi 5 coming out. Let me know down below if you're interested in seeing a video on this guy. Software, Orange Pi OS, this is what we're running now. It's, again, nothing too uh, extravagant. Services and download. Now, I was playing around... Uh, a little bit in here, if I go to download, we have all the different models. And if I go to Raspberry, or not, if I go to Orange Pi 4 LTS, uh, they support Ubuntu, Debian, Android Image. I do know that if you want to put Android on this, it's a very old version. And, but they do have official support for Ubuntu and Debian through here. If you go to official tools, this is where it's kind of funny. They use a, a Google Drive to uh, host their files, which whenever a company does that, like Google Drive, OneDrive, I'm just, it's like, uh, they have Etcher in here and a couple of other tools, Linux tools. That, let's actually go ahead and grab this. Well, okay. See, we're in Linux tool and this is an EXE. Kind of silly. And again, I'm going to note real quick. If we look over here at our CPU usage, 
it's it's writing pretty good when I'm not actively moving things around. It's it's not working too hard, and we still have this uh, video running in the background here. So overall, it's a good experience. I do want to give a lot of credit to the uh, built-in eMMC storage, especially compared to the uh, running. It doesn't matter if it's the Raspberry Pi or even this device. If you're running an operating system off of an SD card slot, the read and write speeds are terrible. You're always going to have a, a better experience using anything that's remotely better than that. Actually, one thing I want to do real quick is kind of close out everything. And I already downloaded it. That is a uh, Geekbench test. So if I go over here under downloads, we got, got a couple different things going on here. Do we really not have an archive manager? So that's one thing I'm just now noticing is this uh, operating system is just completely missing an archive manager. Very strange decision. It does give us a good excuse to go ahead and try out the uh, GNOME Software Center. I believe the password is Orange Pie. Uh, I didn't note that when you first boot into it, there's no login screen or anything like that. It's just Orange Pie, Orange Pie for username and password. You could change that if you just want to keep what's on it, what you you should do for sure but that's just something to keep note of there okay let's try this again open with archive manager there we go let's just pop this right on our desktop and then let's go ahead and run this so first of all always make sure the uh has execution pri privileges which it does so we're going to open terminal here and then just run uh geekbench 5. this is uh this is definitely warming up a little bit doing this all right, so this is about done. What we're gonna do now, I'm gonna open this up and uh, compare it to my uh, Raspberry Pi results. See if that little bump in uh, gigahertz plus the onboard storage, how much of a performance difference it gives us. But now we have the difference here. This is Raspberry Pi OS on the actual Raspberry Pi. And this gives us 184 as a single core and 574 for multi-core. Single core performance on the Orange Pi is significantly better at 284, while the multi-core score is 693. And when it comes to pricing here, this is the Orange Pi 4 LTS 4 gig with that 16 gig of uh, eMMC, which this is the exact one I have, versus the Raspberry Pi at $55. So you're paying an extra, what is that, 30 bucks for this kind of performance boost plus that onboard storage, in my opinion, it's worth it. And considering right now, uh, pre-orders sold out versus uh, in stock, that's kind of a... The Raspberry Pis are really good because of all the uh, community support. Basically, any operating system that has a ARM version has specific support for the Raspberry Pi. So it makes it really easy to uh, go ahead and put whatever you want on this thing. While this, it's it's not not as good when it comes just to overall software availability and all that. So what we're actually going to do is right over here, I just flashed this. This little 64 gig SSD here has Armbian on it, which is a ARM version of Debian. I know this already basically has Debian, but the reason I'm going to install this is this is CLI only because to me, these little mini PCs or these little uh, single board computers are best suited to be a little uh, uh, servers with maybe one or two uses for them. For example, I might make this uh, little Orange Pi a dedicated uh, transmission client with a, a VPN built into it. So that'll be fun. But what I'm going to do here real quick is plug in this little uh, micro SD, just like so. And you can see it show up right there. And we're going to reboot and see if we can get into Armbian. So I'm just going to do a... Uh, a normal reboot here log out and restart all right so we are booted into Armbian here at least the initial setup process so what we're going to do is exactly what it says give it a new root password repeat that and let's go let's go a little different let's go zsh here uh, give us a username and then give that username a password. My real name is in fact Brandon. Let's go ahead, let's be fancy. Let's add my last name too. Uh, would we like to connect to wireless? Let's let's go ahead and do that. Again, this thing has a little Wi-Fi card or Wi-Fi antenna. So we're gonna be able to do this. Let's connect to my Hopkify. Hit enter, password, and okay. Connecting. Oh, what's this? Oh, something screwed up. I went ahead and deactivated that for now. Um, set language based on location yes and we are okay 
That's not very intuitive. Uh, my choice is 57. Oh, it's because it didn't connect to the internet. Okay. Americas. And we want Pacific time. All right. So there we go. What we're going to do real quick is reboot our system so that we can uh, use ZSH, as it said. And then maybe install this right onto the onboard storage if everything goes according to plan. All right. Let's log in. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not good. Failed status. I thought I disconnected you. What's the command to change this? I gotta log in first. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I have to type it fast. I have to type it fast. Okay, we're in. I don't know why it's giving me that error. Okay, edit a connection. This one. Delete it. Delete. Let's go ahead and install this onto our flash. So we're gonna do n and dash sata dash install hit enter tool must run as root will do sudo do that i hope i can get wi-fi working on this uh we have options here boot from emmc system on your emc or install update bootloader on so forth so what we're going to select is this first option here which is to boot from our emmc uh script will erase it let's do that and then we have options let's just go uh ext4 good default now it's formatting hopefully everything goes good because it didn't previously <laughs> real quick shout out to the uh armbian uh people who maintain this you guys are all awesome um let's power off and then when it does power off i'm gonna pop out this sd card real quick so uh pop so now there's no sd card in the system and we will see if it boots do, 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 do. Right. Looks like it's booting in, which is very nice. I wonder if it keeps my same username and password and all that. Uh, Brandon and our password and we're in. Okay. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's try to connect to Wi-Fi and see if it gives us that really weird error, which by the way, if uh, you guys know what it is, let me know. Really hope it does. Ah, oh, see, what is that? Why? What is that? But like, it's connected, because if I go back out of here real quick, quit, it's going to spam the out of that. What if I go like, ping, pickup.tv, I'm connected. Connected fine. Maybe this will fix it. Oh, damn it. I mean, I don't plan on actually using Wi-Fi with this anyway, but if that worked, that would be cool. Hopefully a uh, upgrade helps our little issue there. And reboot. Ah, oh, see, it's still doing it. I mean, it's more annoying than anything. We're on the HTOP here. We can see the uh, memory consumption is a little less at 186 megabytes. So this would be much better for uh, hosting things to get the most out of our actual system, uh, system resources that are available to us. And at this point, if you want some examples of services that you uh, can run and will run perfectly fine on this, I have a few different videos going over uh, my personal home lab and what I have on there. I know with the specs of this device, it will run a Jellyfin server perfectly fine. I'll probably be able to handle a Minecraft server with one or two people on it. And of course, you could go ahead and grab Docker and run a couple different things with uh, probably no problems at all, except for that thing, which is so annoying. And again, I'm going to hook it up to the internet anyway, but I literally Googled that error and I couldn't find anything. So again, if you know, let me know. With all that, if you're interested in purchasing one of these things, uh, the link will be an Amazon affiliate link. If you don't want to use that, just Google it. You'll find it. But right here, ugh, this is the device. It runs good and it's in stock. <laughs> With all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and Goodbye.